Here's our HD28, and I talked about this crack that it's got here, which I saw after I pulled the neck off of it, and you can see it right here. Watch the wood here. There it is, you hear it? Huh? There's a crack right here. And this is very typical. Um, this is what the popsicle brace is supposed to prevent. Uh, and in this case, it may have helped because the crack only runs about right here. But we need to fix this. We can't just leave it alone because that's going to cause some issues. So, let me show you a couple things about fixing this. And I'm balancing the camera with one hand, so you got to forgive me for this. One way to look for cracks is to take this stuff, Goo Gone, which is just naphtha. Um, you can use lighter fluid. Check to make sure that the lighter fluid is actually naphtha because they change occasionally. This stuff I trust. I used it to take um, Picard adhesive off of a guitar, and it's pretty good. You're not going to leave it soaking on the top anyway. So let me get my speaking of which I'm going to have a paper towel. <laughs> okay, so one thing you can do is just pour this on, squeeze a little bit up here, rub it around with your finger, go ahead and wipe it off. Take a look inside the guitar now. And you see that line? The wet mark? That shows you that this is indeed a crack. It shows you the depth of this crack too. A little bit better light here. So that crack runs pretty well all the way up. Oh, we're gonna need to fix this. So, what I'm gonna do, I've already taken the popsicle brace out of this guitar because it wasn't doing anything. You can see there's gone right up here. It's nice and clean wood right up in here. Popsicle brace is gone. It's all sanded smooth. And I'm going to take my brace and I'm going to put it up here. We're going to look at it from the outside of the guitar here so you can see what it looks like. It's going to, very, it's going to cover the brace, or the crack rather, completely. I always write on here, I give the, my name, the date, what kind of glue I use and whether there was an existing crack or not because another guy might come along in 20 years or whatever and say oh look see it's got a crack well it's an existing crack you know and of course it's going to go like this in the guitar so the existing crack is going to be over here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this in here and it's going to fit tightly or snugly at least between the neck block and the sound hole brace right here so it's going to physically prevent this from moving because what happens this crack will extend out into here it'll extend past the rosette um, into the sound hole if you get one on both sides then the neck will collapse into the guitar which is not a good idea it can, the only way it can collapse is if the top of this neck block moves forward you see so you know it doesn't collapse down it can't because the neck block is a solid piece of wood so what happens is it pivots forward the neck block goes like this and collapses in so if you brace the top of it from here to here it can't collapse in and it uses this pretty substantial sound hole brace right here as a support along with the glued um, on the top this is how I fix catastrophic failures that have already collapsed in. So we're going to use this preventatively. This one's a little bit bigger than the normal ones that I make. The normal ones are probably, you know, just a little bit shorter than this. But because this guitar has a pre-existing problem, I'm going to go ahead and use a, bit, a little bit bigger brace. And you can see that the size of this brace still leaves the upper bout free right here, which the popsicle brace does not. I've got no objection with putting some sort of brace in here. And I love Martin's A-frame bracing, which runs a brace from here to, you know, it runs a brace from the X bracing up to the neck block, and that's a great system. I also like their L-shaped brace, which I've already explained, that's a truss rod cover. You know, it comes over here, it comes across, and it makes a support, so that it makes it harder for that neck block to lean forward. But I don't see any sense in putting a bunch of wood out here to support the neck block. It doesn't make any sense to me to put wood out here when it did crack. You see, this is where the cracks occur. So it makes a lot more sense to me to brace this area rather than fill the entire top of the guitar with wood, the upper bout. There's a lot of sound in this, in this upper bout. The neck is connected to the body and vibrations from the neck, my hypothesis, is that vibrations from the neck will transfer down here. What's the first place they hit? right here in the upper bout. So yes, the majority of the sound does come from back here, but there is still some sound up here in the upper bout. 
I mean, you can tap on it. And you can tap on it when there's a popsicle vibration here and when there's not a popsicle vibration, you can hear the difference in sounds. You can hear that change right there. That's where I hit the bracing. Okay, it's pretty easy. So yeah, there's not a lot of sound up in here, but there's some, and it's a high frequency sound, which I personally don't like. Um, I like to hear crispy guitars. So anyway, if you go to my website and you look under popsicle brace, you'll see um, a bunch of um, frequency spectrogram things, and you will find that on a guitar top, this area right here vibrates right around the open B string and up. So that's why you get more treble. I mean, that's evidence, suggestion, that you get a certain sound. You get a trebly, airy, open sound. Okay? Anyway, I'm going to glue this in, and then I'll show you the brace once it's glued in. All right, here's my clamp. And I went ahead and put another cleat up here. Even though it kind of misses the crack, I could see a little bit of... Um, of the goo gone over here and after I put the cleat in I realized I missed it completely it's not the crack doesn't extend that far but when I get these clamps off of here you'll see it does give you a little bit of support back up here in this corner here and I don't normally do this but because this gu guitar has a crack I went ahead and, and reinforced that a little bit but actually my brace will cover everything that's a problem so Okay, I'll let this dry. This is what the clamps look like. And you should have heard this pop when I clamped it down. Um, it, it snapped the top right back into perfect alignment. And yeah, I put a little bit of glue in, in the crack. Um, it's not going to do anything because it just won't do anything. There's a little bit of a gap right there. And it's just a little bit of support. When I put the fingerboard on though and put the neck back on, the glue is going to squeeze down in there. I put a little bit of extra glue on the brace that's inside so that when I clamped it it would squeeze it up from the bottom too and it came out through the crack just a little bit so we're going to get this glued up nice and tight and snug the other place to check is right up in here you know is there anything funny going on in here that needs to be glued when you take a neck off always check this right here because this can steam up and really weaken the top of the guitar like I said this guitar has had a previous neck reset Maybe that guy didn't check that, you know, and maybe that made it weak and collapsed. I don't know, but you got to check the top. Let me get down here where you can see a little bit better. You got to check where the top meets the neck block, and that will maybe thirty percent of the time, twenty-five percent of the time, this will be loose. Put some glue in there, clamp it just like that. 